he's the Shervid Man! Alright, it's the main man back with another plan. Today is the story of Little Jimmy and the awesome truth. I'm a fan of truth, back to his K-Quick days. He's mostly been used as a comedy character, but I know for certain the guy is a great actor and he's capable of a completely different character. And today's story from 2011 WWE is a time when his character was completely different to what you're all used to seeing. And that's fine, but I need to be honest and straight up with you guys. This angle really, really annoyed me. This could have been the hottest angle of 2011 because there were some genuinely good ideas in here. But the Hawk's about to show you how this storyline was taken from a serious major angle to a complete joke in the space of just a few months. Now I don't often ask, but make sure you get social with the HAWK. It's another way for me to spray. So enough beating around your girl's bush, let's get into it. Everything begins on Raw, where a bunch of title contenders are gathered in the ring. Our truths music hits, and they all look around really confused that Truth is joining them. His justification for the interruption is that he's never had a one-on-one -on -one WWE title match on any show. Which, if you think about it, is a terrible justification because so many people on the roster can make the same claim. They all fight in a five-way gauntlet on Raw. The Miz is the champion at the time, more on him later. Truth enters third in this gauntlet against Dolph Ziggler. There's no hype or excitement to see our truth because he's just a guy who's here with no hope of winning. Truth's old TNA finisher doesn't get the job done, so Truth uses a new move to put away Ziggler. Morrison is the next man to join the gauntlet, and Truth also beats him with the same move. But then, completely unfairly, Super Cena is the final man out. Why would Super Cena be the final person in a the gauntlet? There's feuding chants of Let's Go Cena and Cena sucks. Cena does struggle to put away the truth, and surprisingly, this match has no winner. The Miz interferes, and it's a double DQ. Despite that, both Truth and Cena are named the number one contenders, and they're going to go to Extreme Rules to fight for the belt. Things sure are changing for the Truth, who opens the next Raw with a promo. His promo is super baby-faced and over the top. He's so excited, it almost sounds like the crowd are booing him by the end of it. Morrison joins him and accuses the Truth of being in bad shape. They're apparently friends, but Morrison is a bad friend. Morrison accuses him of smoking cigarettes, something that's been happening back to his TNA Asylum days. Morrison wants his shot at the pay-per-view because Truth isn't in good enough shape to have the shot. They agree to fight for the number one contendership. Don't you just hate it when a babyface is dumb and puts his shot on the line? Morrison beats the dumbass too, and Truth's only shot has gone down the slash zone. Truth is a bad loser and he attacks Morrison after the bell. It's a pretty vicious attack too, and Truth keeps cuddling him and being weird during the attack. They devote so much time to this attack, it's actually really refreshing and the crowd are all over him. Truth even sparks up a cigarette, which is something I never expected to see on WWE PG TV. It's actually mind-boggling that this happened in 2011. The crowd chant, that's so evil, and think of the children. A really good heel turn. He's back the following week, and he's changed his what's up entrance to telling the crowd to shut up. He blames his loss to Morrison on the crowd because they encouraged him to face Morrison in the first place. But he won't be doing what the crowd want him to do anymore. No more rapping and no more dancing. And here comes Little Jimmy. Little Jimmy is basically the kids in the crowd who love Truth for the dancing and rapping that he normally does. Truth speaks like this little Jimmy is his imaginary friend. Incredible acting from the Truth, this is great. This is what we saw in his early TNA Asylum days on the microphone. The Truth has set him free. Morrison viciously jumps him. It's all going well at this point, but a dark cloud was circling. At Extreme Rules 2011, despite not having a scheduled match, he does get a promo. He claims that it's all conspiracy that the WWE is holding him back. Once again, this is similar to his TNA angle in the Asylum days. I'm sorry to keep mentioning it, but it's true. That angle didn't last long enough, so it's good to get some more of it. In the pay-per-view main event, John Morrison has a chance to climb out the cage and win the WWE title, but Truth costs him the match. Truth doesn't just attack Morrison, though. He attacks everyone as he talks to himself and looks like a complete nutcase. Truth climbs out the cage and looks very sad. Cena eventually wins the belt. Truth continues hating on Morrison. On the following show, Truth randomly interrupts a promo exchange with a bunch of people he has nothing in common with. He brags about sending Morrison to hospital, he threatens to send everybody in the ring to hospital, and he has funny insults for everyone. When an angry black man is talking, you will need to shut up. These promos are so unhinged and insane. He wants to face Cena for the belt. The anonymous Raw GM gives everybody in the ring a shot at the Cena belt, except Truth. 
He starts shaking and vibrating and dumping in his nappy of anger. An awkward silence falls as he flips out. Truth goes crazy and he's screaming and saying he's better than all of them, especially Rey Mysterio. His backwards walking and gritting his teeth is some brilliant multitasking, by the way. Truth has completely lost the plot at this point in his career. He's doing all these impressions, conspiracies, and more imaginary little Jimmy stuff. Truth continues taking out his frustrations on Rey Mysterio, and this is going to be his next feud. Now, Truth hasn't had a single match since turning heel. It's been over a month, but now we're going to get one. It's the opening match at the Over the Limit pay-per-view. It's also interesting that he doesn't have any entrance music at all during this time. He has a pre-match promo where he claims it was a conspiracy that he didn't have his own parking space. And Seattle is full of dirty hippies. It's R-Truth versus Rey Mysterio. This is a very underrated match. It's a lot of fun for an opening match and it does its job well at getting the crowd hyped for the evening. He's still using the downward spiral type move as his finisher at this point. Truth wins the match and that is a pretty big win for the Truth because Rey Mysterio will be champion not too long after this. He hits Mysterio with a bottle of water and the crowd seem to legit hate Truth. This is going well. On Raw, Brett the Hitman Hart is the general manager for the night, but the Truth interrupts him. Wow, they really are trying with the Truth, they're giving him some big spots. Truth is here to try and convince Brett to give him a title match because Truth hasn't had any opportunities. He grabs a little Jimmy from the crowd and gives him glasses. This kid, man. This kid is your inner happiness when you're a child. I wish I could be this happy again in my life. Truth says because he's made little Jimmy happy, he deserves a world title shot now. Bret Hart doesn't agree and doesn't want him to have a title shot because Truth is a lunatic. Luckily for him, the champion Super Wiener is here. During this exchange, Truth makes Cena legit burst out laughing. Truth refuses to leave Cena alone until he gives him a title match. The anonymous GM still refuses to give Truth a title match, but he does put him in a main event tag match. Truth and CM Punk take on Rey Mysterio and Super Wiener. Truth doesn't win his main event match though, so it was a waste of time. But all of that aside, the next episode of Raw is a good one for the Truth. He starts out the show by attacking a merchandise stand and complaining about everyone having merchandise but him. What a start to the show this is. He's flipping out and doing a running commentary throughout the arena as he finds John Cena related items and trashes them. He moves into the crowd now, insulting children wearing John Cena clothing. A very sad looking man is sat with his sad looking kid. He calls the kid Lil Jimmy. The whole crowd is conspiring against him and he can't stand little Jimmy's. The superhero interrupts his tirade and makes fun of Truth's mental health problems. Very nice for a character he's supposed to be anti-bullying. Cena tells him the crowd aren't Jimmy's and he will beat some sense into the Truth tonight in the main event. It's non-title though. So we fast forward to the match and Truth is very happy about the mixed crowd reaction for Cena. During the match he annoys Cena and keeps hiding on the outside. Cena gets frustrated and gives chase, which leads Truth to getting a count-out victory over Cena. It's so rare for somebody to get one over on Cena at this point, so this was highly enjoyable. He goes back over to the miserable dad and kid from earlier, and he throws a coke up in the dad's face, causing him to start crying. Brilliant, I love this run. But that would change, literally straight away. The win gives Truth a title match at the next pay-per-view, but in order to have the match, he must first apologise for his actions last week. Instead, he marches to the ring in a confederate uniform with a sword, rapping and singing about Little Jimmy a conspiracies to pirate music. This one's going too far. It's funny, but we need to take the truth seriously. This is just too stupid for words. It's gone too far. There is a line to walk between unhinged and complete comedy goofball. He apologises to all the Little Jimmys as Stone Cold and Vince McMahon look on confused. Truth reveals he's dressed as a confederate soldier because he agrees with seceding and he wants to secede from the WWE universe. He sounds so silly and idiotic. He's been complaining about conspiracies and people holding him back this whole time and now he's in the ring with Vince McMahon and yet he's not attacking him or holding him accountable. It was so good up to this point and now he's a goof. It's comedy gone too far and it's a long painful segment. The Miz interrupts and points out how dumb the truth is. I have to agree. Cena interrupts them and makes fun of Truth's mental health problems again. We do get one good thing from this rubbish though, as The Miz and The Truth are teamed up for the first time together. They win their match by DQ, but they sure don't look like winners. Truth ain't a quitter, he's a winner. John Morrison is supposed to return and have a revenge match with The Truth, but The Truth has killed him off backstage. Truth finds him and screams, Little Jimmy got Johnny. He crushes him with a packing case. At the same time as all this is going on, The Miz is doing his own conspiracy thing that he's being held back. Not only that, but CM Punk has his own sort of similar storyline with the Summer of Punk. Lots of unhappy wrestlers on the roster in 2011. 
The other hype for the pay-per-view is a fake news press conference of Truth complaining to Barack Obama about conspiracies. The little Jimmy thing is getting pretty popular with the crowd. Capital Punishment 2011 is the biggest night in the career of our truth He's stolen Cena's belt and he's walking around and talking like a big shot. Truth versus Cena for the WWE title in the main event of the entire show. Whilst this is one of the best matches of our truth it just doesn't go far enough and the crowd are only lukewarm for this match. Cena ends up making him look like a complete joke too. Truth spent months moaning about his lack of opportunities and then he lost when he had an opportunity so there's really nowhere to go with this. Didn't even make much of a match of it. Truth and Christian have a funny exchange on the mic with both of them complaining about their lack of championships. The crowd are loudly laughing at Truth and there's little Jimmy chants in the crowd. I think Truth is about to turn face. Truth of course loses the following match to Randy Orton. Weak booking never helped anybody. Unlike in TNA when he talks about conspiracies with venom and hatred in his voice, in WWE it feels like a silly joke every time he brings them up. He does manage to beat Cena in a tables match on Raw, but it was completely down to the interference from CM Punk, and none of this is even about Truth as he's completely overshadowed by the Punk pipe bombs. Truth continued to bounce around the mid-card of the company, but his chance of ever being anything meaningful at this point is over. He loses any of the important matches that he has, this goes on for a couple of months. During this time, Miz and the Truth are often teamed together. At this point, they're not an official team. John Morrison also returned, but somehow we didn't even get a pay-per-view match between Truth and Morrison. Not sure why not. The best we do get is a Fools Count Anywhere match on Raw, but this feud has completely been called off at this point because it's literally months since it started. Truth loses the Fools Count Anywhere match because he always loses. Towards the end of August, Miz and Truth randomly attack Santina Morella, and this would be the official start of a new tag team called The Awesome Truth. Truth explains that since Triple H has taken charge, he has found himself left off shows and The Miz is also in that same boat. This promo is hilarious because the crowd won't stop chanting what. This causes Miz to say they sound like a herd of ducks. They're sick of not having any opportunities and from now on they're going to take them themselves. There's also the debut of Truth's new rap song at the end of this segment. Truth and The Miz team up to tell the crowd that they suck. For some reason this whole thing is hilarious to me, I loved the whole segment. That somehow leads nowhere as they continue to play second fiddle to the Summer of Punk storyline. Truth continues doing comedy. At this point, I'm not sure if he can even help himself. The latest is that he hasn't heard of any of the long words that his partner The Miz uses. Why does he have to be a clown? In TNA, he was booked as aggressive, focused, determined, but slighted man. Here, he doesn't know what the word epiphany means. Miz reveals that the awesome Truth will be facing Air Boom for the tag belts at the pay-per-view. Not sure how any of that helps them with the conspiracy stuff to keep them out of the main event. Truth also faces Punk in a singles match, which of course he loses. The Awesome Truth do get their tag title shot at the Night of Champions 2011. We get The Miz and The Truth rapping the You Suck entrance, which I love. They face Air Boom, Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne, so you'd think this would be a definite win for The Awesome Truth, but no. Despite the match being really fun, and I did actually really enjoy this one, the Awesome Truth still lose, so now they can't even beat people who are nowhere near the world title. Can we at least give them the tag titles? Well, it seems like there were other plans for the team. Miz shoves the referee over to get them DQ'd, and both guys assault the ref because they think he's part of the conspiracy. All Truth does is slap him. The following Raw, the Awesome Truth has summoned to Triple H's office, and both guys are just begging him for forgiveness and not standing by any of their actions. What a bunch of pussies. No wonder this stuff didn't get over as big as it should have. They're not even apologising in a fake way, they mean it. The Miz reassures Triple H that he knows he's not really part of any conspiracy. Truth also apologises and says he won't ever do anything bad again. They love being WWE superstars and they apologise 50 times. Triple H fines them both a quarter of a million dollars. What an overreaction. All the Truth did was slap one referee. I've seen a thousand wrestlers do worse to refs. He also forces the team to face Cena and CM Punk in the main event. After their obvious loss, Triple H storms out again and fires both members of Awesome Truth. What a dick. They hardly did anything wrong. Maybe this conspiracy stuff does have something going for it and here's the proof. Our tag team heroes do tackle Triple H to the ground but they're both dragged out of the arena and thrown through a door, Buff Bagwell style. Half a month later on what the Hell in a Cell 2011 pay-per-view, a triple threat cage match has taken place for the WWE title. After Alberto Del Rio wins, Truth and Miz rush the ring in hoodies, beating up referees and wrestlers. 
The sail has been lowered back down and nobody can get in to stop them. The roster desperately tried to get in, but nobody can manage it. This actually feels like a really big moment. It's pretty cool. The door is cut open and the Miz and the Truth voluntarily surrender to the police. This protects them from the angry wrestlers at ringside. It doesn't protect them from Triple H though, who is a massive dick in this run. The whole thing felt like this was the biggest moment of this entire video. Due to the game's aggressions against them, Triple H is stripped of his management position and replaced with John Laronitis. Laronitis reinstates the Awesome Truth to the show. The game still hates the Awesome Truth though and a match is made for the Vengeance show. The game and CM Punk versus the tag team of our dreams. But unfortunately the match turns out to not really be about them as Kevin Nash interferes and takes out the game. The only other thing I've noticed is that the Truth and Miz have a new tag team finisher which is just their normal moves but combined. They call it Little Jimmy's Finale. Awesome Truth win a match and the camera instantly cuts away to Kevin Nash. The team start a new feud with Wiener, although in a way, it's an old feud isn't it? Miz and the Truth are apparently holding Cena responsible for the conspiracy stuff. It's hard to take anything this serious after we saw them begging Triple H for forgiveness before they were fired. They aren't so scary anymore, especially when they have a two on one handicap match against Cena and can't even beat him with that sort of advantage. The Awesome Truth are bad losers and beat the hawk out of him after the bell, so Laronitis makes another match where Cena can choose his own partner. It's gonna be The Rock. To be honest, at this point, The Miz is massively overshadowing his partner on the mic. Any bigger wins that this team manages seems to be Miz getting the pin. Before the pay-per-view match can happen, The Rock finally comes face to face with The Awesome Truth. Let the microphone burial begin. Rest in peace their careers. But in all honesty, The Rock doesn't say much about them. All the truth managed to do is call The Rock a joke. There's more stuff going on with The Rock and Cena passively insulting each other. That's because the awesome truth aren't seen as important. They're only on pay-per-view to give The Rock and Cena someone to face. The truth barely says a line as The Miz handles all the talking. I wonder if The Truth was scared of them or something. Even the cover for the Survivor Series 2011 is just The Rock and Cena. You wouldn't even know Awesome Truth were in this match. On the plus side, their rapping entrance is the best they've performed it during this entire run. Cena also gets heavily booed. The match is fine, but never for a second did you believe the Awesome Truth had a single chance to win in your head. The Rock beats The Miz. It felt like The Truth wasn't even involved in this storyline. He was though. There is more time for Cena to destroy both guys on the mic over on Raw. He tells Truth he's going to remove his braids and melt his gold teeth down and sell it to Mr. T. He reminds them that nobody cares about them at all. He also stirs the pot and says that both guys secretly hate each other. Because Truth is out of his mind, he actually believes what Cena says and buys into it. They end up coming to blows. Miz is smarter than the Truth though and he talks him down and says they're going to go and beat up Cena together. As the Truth had originally been fined for testing positive for Mary Jane. But after Survivor Series, they changed their mind on what substance he'd taken and said it was Spice. Evan Bourne had also been suspended at the same time for Spice prior to Survivor Series. So basically, the WWE lied so Truth could go ahead with the planned Survivor Series main event. Once it was over, they were happy to suspend him. Truth did return from his suspension and he turned face. In yet another case of drop ball, The Miz and The Truth did not have a pay-per-view match against each other. So that's that then. It wasn't really as good as I'd hoped for. It was interesting at first because it gave us a brief glimpse of the intense and serious truth that we had in TNA. But he turned up just cracking jokes and turned the whole thing into a comedy act at every opportunity. I'm not sure if this was him or the WWE, but let's be honest, comedy is his forte. He constantly talked about conspiracies, rarely without evidence. It was just like the word was funny for him to say. He also lost way too much. By the time the awesome truth came along, it was just too late and he was seen as a comedy heel. He was a part of some pretty big matches as part of Awesome Truth, but their goal was never clear and they weren't the focus of anything. There were too many other big storylines happening at the same time. Awesome Truth was supposed to be these badasses, but they ended up begging Triple H for forgiveness and not in a sneaky way either. They meant it. Give me a break. That killed the team for me. They weren't dangerous, they were just deluded pussies. I did like the idea of giving a voice to the anti-Cena fans and give them something to root for, but sadly they'd be rooting for losers, and if you don't agree with that, well, beggars can't be choosers.